There are countless unexplained ancient enigmas, which can be found atop a remote mountainside of Peru, within a site only rediscovered within known modern history, now famously known as Machu Picchu. Polygonal masonry. Although it is a technique found all over the world, the standard of polygonal masonry on show within the ancient sites of Peru is undoubtedly some of the most impressive found anywhere on Earth. However, as we have discussed in the past, with varying degrees of reaction to our discourse, ancient civilizations the world over, nearly all currently unexplained ancient ruins, no matter where they are found, has some form of celestial significance built into its construction. The controversial question, however, is why? Why do we see the monitoring and indeed celebration of solstices throughout ancient culture? Why, and indeed how, were these precise alignments accomplished? Is Intuahatana yet another astonishing relic, left as a nod to the advanced knowledge of its builder, people who somehow constructed the clock, and indeed Machu Picchu, the surrounding settlement? Now tied to countless legends as to its origins, the most popular, however, is that Intehuatana is, quote, the place where the sun becomes tangled, end quote. It was constructed with precise alignment, perfectly angled to face the four cardinal points. It is located at the top of the mountain, atop a structure adorned with 70 steps leading to its position. It is unquestionably an ancient upart, and is considered, by all who are aware of its existence, as a wonder of ancient technology. A solar clock, somehow created to indicate when it was precisely the winter solstice. It is, coincidentally, a time which is hugely significant to modern-day Peruvians. Known to the Incas as Inti Remi, the long-held local celebrations seem to coincide with the purpose of the clock, once undoubtedly created using tremendous effort and knowledge all in the effort to signify this same date, one which is officially the most important celebration of the entire empire. Is this pure coincidence? Or is this celebration a surviving tradition dating back to a forgotten antiquity? Incredibly, there are, in fact, two Intihuatanas or solar clocks within ancient Peru. One is located in Pisac and the as forementioned Machu Picchu solar clock, positioned on what is now classified as a sacred mountain. On September of 2000, a beer company was making a commercial when one of their cranes hit the solar clock. They unfortunately broke off part of the point and left the relic in a terrible condition. The National Institute of Culture, however, the INC, sued the company for damages in 2005 and was awarded an undisclosed amount. Who built these incredible ancient solar clocks? Why were so many ancient civilizations obsessed with the sun and indeed its activity and precessions? Were these ancient civilizations trying to tell us something? Why were so many ancient quarries left in a state of seeming abandon? As if the ancient people, once undertaking the movement and placement of ancient megaliths so huge, we today still cannot explain how they were moving them, seemingly vanished, right in the middle of said undertakings. Are these solar clocks, like the ancient quarries which still mystify all who explore them, a surviving clue as to the fate of this past civilization? They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling. The chronological dating of our technological development and capabilities within antiquity are often correlated and judged upon the developments within heat management of metal refinery. For example, one of our strongest arguments against the modern-day attested view that ancient Egyptians were the builders of the Sphinx, the pyramids, the tombs, etc., is partly based upon their lack of ability in heating a furnace to a sufficient enough temperature to create the hardened metal tools needed to penetrate and carve such hard stones. The Nanjing Belt is an extremely rare find that has unsurprisingly vanished from public view, preventing any further analysis, although the existence of these artifacts was officially noted in several places 
and was indeed analyzed by several specialists. What is amazing regarding the Nanjing Belt is its age, but most importantly, what it is made of. In 1952, two tombs were found within Yixing City in China. One of the tombs also had a clear date inscribed upon its inside. It stated that they were buried on the 20th of September of the 7th year of Yuan Kang, the late general of Zhao, 1700 years ago. When the belt was initially retrieved, it was sent for analysis at the chemistry department of Nanjing University. The results were astonishing. 10% copper, 5% manganese, and the remaining was 85% pure aluminum. However, the development of aluminum is a very modern achievement, requiring extreme heats to smelt, heats that we believe were impossible to manage at the time. Alumina is dissolved in molten cryolite at 1000 degrees C, with a melting point of pure alumina being 2054 degrees Celsius. So, the question persists, how could such an artifact exist? A question once taken up in the West by three scholars, Butler, Glidewell, and Pritchard at St. Andrews University. The abstract sums up their work, quote, Pieces of aluminum, supposedly parts of a set of belt ornaments, were found in a Jing Dynasty tomb during excavations in the 1950s. The authenticity of these finds was questioned at the time in view of the technology required to isolate aluminum from its ore. Examination of the thermodynamic requirement for this process demonstrates unequivocally that the temperature required for this process is greatly in excess of that possible with Jing Dynasty technology, and so the finds cannot be authentic. Unfortunately, again, we find ourselves in familiar waters. So-called scholars, three in fact, with a conclusion based solely upon historical assumptions. Unfortunately, the artifact was seemingly too controversial for some, and it has disappeared, sadly, quite possibly forever. One of the more obscure and personal favorite oo-parts of mystery history is a small yet incredibly special unique figurine. Dated to the Stone Age, yet regardless of this extraordinary antiquity, this hollow figurine remaining unopened and unbroken for so long, interestingly, rattled. After a delicate extraction procedure was undertaken, a metallic ball was found inside. A sphere, which due to the aforementioned age of said upart, should simply not exist. Yet, after further research, we have discovered that this unique figure wasn't a singular anomaly as we first presumed, but was actually part of a collection of equally puzzling artifacts, some of equally unexplainable characteristics. We now know it was found amongst a collection by locals mining for gold in Sierra Leone. They are now known as the anomaly figures. The statues are now attributed to a number of varying legends in Sierra Leone. Dating from 17,000 BC, some believe that angels who once lived in the heavens were, as a punishment for causing bad behavior, turned into humans and sent to Earth. A legend uncannily similar of certain fallen angel theories. The anomaly figures are thusly thought to serve as representations of those entities and were cast as a reminder of how they were banished from the heavens to earth to live as humans. There are many strange hybrid interpretations within the collection. It includes animals such as monkeys, elephants, lizards, among other curiosities, some also depicted as giants. Quote, While the figures are varied in shape and time, they are uniform in appearance, indicative of a common purpose. That purpose remains unknown, however. The figures were part of a Temni culture and tradition, but that, upon invasion by the Mendi, the tradition was lost and the civilization displaced to other locations. With so many questions and uncertainties, it is unknown if we will ever have definitive answers as to the dating, origins, and purpose of the anomaly figures. For now, 
they remain a magnificent representation of the ancient civilizations that preceded those that now live in Sierra Leone." End quote. Asserted curator Frederick Lamp. We find the entire collection, especially our previously covered Upart's metallic sphere, highly compelling. Quote, Here we have some kind of animal. It looks like a dinosaur. When Professor Petoni found this statue, it was reportedly making a strange noise. So, upon further investigation, which involved a circular incision into the statue's stone, it was found to contain a small black ball. You can see this mysterious object resting within the opening. After further research surrounding this artifact, the professor informed me that somehow somebody must have performed a practical joke on them. When asked why, he replied, because the result of the research shows that this metal material is in fact, amazingly, chrome steel. However, as far as modern man is aware, chrome steel was only discovered for the first time during the beginning of the 20th century within Austria. That means it should have been impossible to have found some inside a statue with an astonishing estimated age of approximately 17,000 years. Professor Petoni was laughing in disbelief. He said, if a statue is making a strange sound, I do not open it right away. I also first performed several x-rays prior to his research. And clearly, within this still complete closed statue, is this unexplainable round chrome ball, proof the sphere was in existence before more detailed exploration was undertaken. End quote. That was an excerpt from one of Klaus Dona's many press interviews, specifically pertaining to one of the many seemingly impossible ancient out-of-place artifacts he so often covers within his work. Intriguingly, along with this detailed description of unfolding events surrounding their research of this unquestionably perplexing item, Professor Petoni side-noted that during his examinations of the object's outer shell, he also noticed that at some time within its long life, undoubtedly within antiquity, it had previously been expertly opened, presumably during a similar operation. Then, at some later date, and for some currently unknown reason, almost perfectly resealed. Was this task undertaken by a later advanced civilization? A group of individuals who also uncovered this artifact's inexplicable features. Possibly a lost civilization's ancient museum exhibit? Could it possibly be far older than the 17,000-year aging it is currently assigned with. It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Sometimes an artifact will be discovered which challenges our entire understandings of the world around us. We are confronted with things that, according to our worldview, shouldn't exist. And in 1991, researchers performing geomineralogical studies along several Russian rivers would make such a discovery. Known as the Ural Mountains, it is a notoriously strange, cold, and incredibly lonely slice of the Russian landscape. Accounts of snow yetis and terrifying creatures have plagued the mountain ranges for decades, even including a reported attack by such a creature within Dyatlov Pass. The Ural Mountains is clearly one of the weirdest and most isolated places on Earth. And it seems it has also been the resting place for a series of several thousand tiny coil-shaped artifacts, ancient nanotechnology of an unknown and quite possibly alien origin. The larger artifacts made from copper, while the smaller ones from tungsten. What is clearly the most astonishing thing regarding these tiny ancient relics is their size, some of the exhibits being only 2.4 macrons long or around one ten thousandth of an inch. Seeing as though the average human hair is about 100 microns, it's safe to assume that these microscopic objects were not constructed by our primitive ancestors, for to create such intriguing objects would have required a knowledge and an application of sophisticated nanotechnologies. Not only do they exhibit characteristics reminiscent of components used within our own modern nanotechnologies, 
the nano coils also exhibit golden ratio proportions, a trait which could only be present if intelligently designed by mathematically wise beings. Some skeptics to their true history have predictably attempted to speculate that the apparently alien objects were simply fragments of debris from the nearby rocket test facility, but a report from the Moscow Institute of Technology concluded that their vast age was enough to dismiss this as a possibility. The conclusive figure acquired from this official dating put their initial creation to around 300,000 years ago. Studies performed by facilities in Helsinki, Moscow and St. Petersburg also backed up the claims that the coil-shaped objects were manufactured in the very distant past, stating that they predate modern history by some orders of magnitude. Unfortunately, as with so many items we cover, since the nanospirals principal investigator Dr. Johannes Fieback died in 1999, the research has been halted. What's more, Predictably, the current whereabouts of all of these ancient nano-artifacts is unfortunately unknown. It's fair to say, however, that the Ural Mountains still possess some of these curious and very ancient objects, but judging by their size, they won't be very easy to find. Guatemala, littered with ancient wonders, temples which pierce its dense canopy, all once declared as separate structures. Modern technology, however, has shown that these structures, mostly now submerged by dense undergrowth, was once one huge mega-metropolis, with Tikal in particular also once containing a plaque displaying a great deluge, with the site submerged in what is depicted as a cataclysm, with a volcanic eruption also in the background of said image. With mysterious megaliths still found littering the foliage, one site in particular, it would seem, evaded destruction, and the subsequent rainforest's creeping grip which has consumed much of this enormous ancient site. Known as Kirigua, it remains virtually untouched, yet the most intriguing thing regarding this site, apart from its superb preservation, are the enigmatic stone carvings not only found at the site but throughout the jungle itself. Statues and megaliths, presumably often depicting queens and kings in strange contraptions, seemingly familiar in form to modern vehicles or the interiors of an aircraft. Once claimed as mere signposts, the sheer abundance of these mystifying tributes, however, now makes this explanation unlikely. For even if merely artistically inspired, what do they depict? Why would an ancient civilization show such passion in casting these particular-looking technological devices into massive stones all over the Guatemala rainforest? With Kirigua thankfully so well preserved, we can explore a number of these baffling carved megaliths in detail. Were they trying to tell future generations something? Did they find something crashed within the forest, possibly documenting a find and proposed purposes upon these stones? Did they witness a form of craft take to the air and seemingly into the heavens? Could this have been the inspiration for why leaders of these tribes would want to be immortalized in carved, similar-appearing machines, in the hope of eternal life or indeed a craft capable of transporting them into the heavens? Vast questions still surround this ancient civilization's knowledge, one now known to have been over 10 million strong. Did this enormous, once incredibly powerful ancient civilization get visited by beings from another planet? Possibly found a crashed craft? One they attempted to depict a reverse engineering of? The fact that many depict what modern man would perceive as complex craft concepts, many find highly intriguing. 
we also find these massive stone megaliths. The efforts undoubtedly applied to create them, their source inspiration, and indeed the images they depict, by a civilization we now know were undeniably advanced and extremely ancient, once lost for millennia and only now being rediscovered, highly compelling.